Guys, welcome back to the Lean and Mean Academy, where we talk about one truck, big profits. Today, we got a special video, a little back porch, chopping it up, sit and talk with my boy Cody Yarbrough over at Southeast Softwash. Um, you know, we were hashing it out a little bit earlier, talking about, you know, just like how consumable our world is. I treat everything pretty much as a damn consumable. Um, and I think it's probably best practice to eventually learn how to do that because you're not romantic about our, our equipment. We're going to dive into this and I hope you enjoy it. I think it's going to be a good talk before I do. If you are looking to get your st business started this year, Cody and I do an event every now and then we did them all last year. Every single one of them sold out. It is May 20th and 21st down at Southeast Softwash headquarters, the serious starter boot camp. A lot of folks who've taken this are making big money. Ashley Westfall, we got a bunch of people in the inner circle who have taken this and they're crushing. I think Ashley did 72K last month. She started with us in 2021. Yep. Serious yep. starter, the first one. So guys, get your tickets. It'll be the first link in the description. First link in the comments. It'll be two days with Cody and myself talking about technical, safety, chemicals, application, cleaning, and a day full with me of marketing. All right. So get your tickets. Do not wait. It will sell out. What up, Cody? How are we doing tonight? Hey, hey, you've been on this back deck before, right? We, we've been here before. Bro, smoking cigars. It's like a good time. Backpack. It's, a, it's good a good time. You had it all redone. It's beautiful back there, man. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about uh, consumables earlier, it, all the way down to your pants. Like the bleach <laughs> is rough, man. It's going to, it's going to destroy everything uh, eventually. So we try to make our stuff last as long as possible. But I love what you said. You don't get all romantic on it. Can't love it. <laughs> you can't love it too much. I, that's one of the things I see, especially with new guys, right? is they're always trying to like they're wanting to buy the uh perfect example the 12 volt uh head right the little like the replacement head they think they're going to take the head off right. and replace that and and it's because they're romantic about like these parts and they're romantic about losing them but I'm going to tell you guys everything's under pressure on a pressure washing soft washing skid obviously and you're always dealing with corrosive chems like bleach acids all kinds of stuff and it's always surrounded by this stuff all day every single day everything's gonna go bad the damn truck you keep it in okay <laughs> is gonna it's rot. gonna go bad <laughs> that, that bed of that truck is gonna rot out yep. if you yep. don't keep up and and maintain it cody talk a little bit about this mentality that we see this the romanticism about everything in the game all their parts and equipment well i think it, it stems from kind of a lack of perspective because a lot of guys they jump into pressure washing it's just one of many potential entrepreneurial ventures they could could kind of dive into and a lot of guys are used to their tools lasting you know forever if you've got a toolbox with wrenches and you know, stuff like that in there, it's basically one and done. But these tools that we use, they don't last forever, like you said, because of the nature of the chems, the nature of just wear and tear and being around chemicals and wet and pressure and electrical and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you can't fall in love with it. And it, if we keep the right perspective, um, it really helps me to just look at them as consumables because we were talking a second ago, there's not many businesses that uh, you get away with as, as little we'll say money spent to keep your stuff running. A good example is like lawn care. That's a good segue over. It's a kind of a cousin industry for us. If you took the same amount of money and started a lawn care business, I guarantee you, you'd spend probably five X, uh, six, seven X per year to keep that trailer's worth of stuff running. It would be all the time. Uh, and so if we scale it back and look at that, that pump that goes out, right. Uh, or your pressure washer, every, two, three seasons, you know, I just replaced the whole thing. Um, I just changed the whole thing out. That that 12 volt pumps are like a perfect example because we get that question a lot. Hey, can't you just replace the little head on the top? Well, yeah, you can. But the problem with that is there's definitely some wear and tear on the electric motor itself as well at that point. And so I'm, I, I could be saving $85 instead of replacing the whole pump by just buying the head, or I could be gambling and losing because it's going to go out anyway in three weeks. And so I've cost myself 
a head plus the time and the pump anyway. So the way me and Aaron and, and any any guys that have been around and any Pierce, Aaron's brother, what does Pierce do? Pitch it. Oh, Pierce will throw stuff away. Pierce don't care if it's good. Pierce is an animal. Okay. <laughs> he he he's a rent like he's even more consumable than me, bro. Like his rhetoric, you know, you and I are that Pierce boy, don't hey, don't tempt him with the <laughs> He has a pallet of hoses, a pallet. He goes, they go bad, throw them away. I go, don't right. you replace them? He goes, hell no, we ain't stopping. He right. goes, I ain't got time to patch that. Right. I ain't patching that. I ain't staying here tonight and patching it. Grab another hose, plug it up, let's go. That's how he operates. Right. And uh, it's 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 very, um, how do I say this? It creates a lot of freedom, peace of mind. Yes. If you can get there. Um, and, and that's kind of what the message is as a whole tonight is like, how can you get there? Because I know that I have what we're talking about in me. I grew up where you grew up. Okay. I know that I'm going to fix everything. Yeah. Okay. And then you screw the head of that pump on and it's not quite lined up. The diaphragm is not quite lined up and you pinched it. And now it's spewing everywhere. Now you've wasted like two hours on your right. weekend and it still don't work. It's not going to work. And, and right. so it's just like, how do the guys get to that point? I know we can't save everybody. I also know that everybody don't want to be saved. Okay? That's true. Everybody don't yeah. want to be saved. Some guys, <laughs> they like living in the shed, tweaking on it. But, you know, tell me how you feel about that. Why Why is that such a, a sticky place for people? Um, well, Another good example. We had a guy that had a trailer. He's semi-local. He had a trailer for a year and he, he made, I want to say he told us he made like 182,000 with that trailer. Dude killed it. He's great at marketing. Um, and the next kind of end of that season, or maybe it was the first of the next season. He was like, Hey, you know, my, my pressure hose is, is kind of wore out. I was like, yeah, let's throw it away. And he couldn't, he could not believe that he was going to throw these, these two coupled together, hundred foot hoses 200 total uh so man you've drug it across 50 miles of driveways you're, you're gonna pitch that at some point and and just buy another one um i'm i'm all about throwing something out and replacing now you you know you don't want to just throw things away for no reason but you've got to do a quick calculation is it worth my time and the answer is probably no and you get rid of it and you replace it because it's quicker to change it than to fiddle with it for two hours and here's where I want to encourage you guys get your mind to understand there are more valuable uses of your time than the, uh, even if it's, even if it's 45 minutes, right? If it's 45 minutes and you could replace it in five minutes and it's something you do kind of once a year, then just change it out and take all that mental energy and put it into your marketing. That's what you need to be doing. Um, because our rigs, whether you have a trailer from us or an aluminum max, those are the two big platforms. Right. We give our guys this this estimate when they pick up their equipment. I tell them, look, budget fifteen hundred bucks a year for maintenance, and I'm, that's really kind of a fat number. Um, a lot of guys can get away with eight hundred dollars, you know, nine hundred, a thousand, somewhere in there, because that's really just some pumps, some swivels on the hose reels once a, a winter time. Change them all out; they're fifty, sixty bucks. It's not a lot of money anyway, and so we're running a six figure business where we're maybe doing. You know, a hundred thousand zero to to seven k guys, they're they're crushing it, and you're talking about hundred two hundred bucks a month on maintenance, which is it, guys, it's nothing. And so it's it's you got to reprogram that you talk about it so much that broke mentality that southern, you know, the southern mentality is all across the country, but it's that broke mentality that a lot of us that's just where we come from, and we can't fathom it. It's very hard to get there. Here's what I do to, to keep it suppressed in me. I spend too much money on things. I'll, I'll try to, I'll catch myself trying to, you know, take a shortcut and I'll say, ah, no, because I'm going to practice what I preach. And I'm going to do that to keep myself in that mindset. And, and here's what it's done for me. It's worked out. It's made me available to do all these other things that make me tons of money instead of looking at these little, you know, little, little things right here. It's crazy. And that and that's so interesting, you know. And I talk about it so much is because it's still in me, okay. But I'm aware that it's in me, right? Is I don't think that you can eradicate that thing. I don't guess. I don't think you can. I've I've thought a lot about that, 
but uh, the fact that I'm aware means that now I can combat it. And I'm like you, like, uh, I just got a, a motorcycle over here and I got a buddy who has a friend and he's like, Hey man, just take it to JB. He's good. Like he'll work on it, you know, kind of a shade tree kind of guy who knows everything. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But here's the <laughs> thing. I don't, I was like, do I have to order the parts for JB? He goes, yeah, you got to order them and bring them to him and he'll do everything, but he's a whiz, man. Yeah. He's great. I was like, here's the thing, but I'm taking it to KTM and I'm going to tell them, here's what y'all do. Okay. Y'all put everything on there and it runs amazing when it leaves here. That's it. Right. I don't care what you call me. If you're doing something crazy, I'll approve it over the phone. All right. I don't want to have to deal with ordering the parts, hoping I got the right one because I'm not super understanding of this bike. Right. All right. Praying that, it, oh, yeah, and hoping they could fit me in all this stuff. No, no, no. They got a system down there. OK, they, they got an appointment. They take you in. They intake. I tell them, do everything. They go, cool. We'll look it over. We do a diagnostic. It costs three hundred dollars. I don't care. Do the diagnostic. You know what? I just thought about this. Tell me if, if this resonates. When I was a kid, even into my teenage years, we'd be riding around, you know, riding around. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. We'd be out putting it, usually putting out flyers for roofs for dad. You know, I was a right. kid, but I'd go with dad. So on the weekends, we'd go to Atlanta, the South Atlanta neighborhoods, and we'd putting out flyers because dad was trying to get roof cleaning jobs for the next few weeks. And we would go to these rich people's houses and we would look at them and, and make fun of them. Like, look at these idiots. You know, they probably take that Mercedes in for every service at the dealer and a bunch of suckers. You know, they don't even need that done. And they just take it in there. And the dealer just bends them up, which is actually true. But here's the thing. They're rich and you ain't. <laughs> so whatever it is that they're doing in the big picture, it is working. It is absolutely working. And a lot of those people aren't dumb. They know it doesn't need that service necessarily, but the big picture of their life, it needs that service. So they don't ever think about that. And they take those brain cells and go make a million dollars over here. Meanwhile, us peasants, ah, <laughs> look at them. They are so dumb. Torquing <laughs> wrenches on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I well, it's we don't know what else to do with our time. It's our time until you unlock the vehicle. Like a lot of guys, we're talking about Ashley Westfall earlier. She she's smart chick. She unlocked the vehicle of pressure washing, and now Ashley knows what her times were. She knows I ain't doing that crap. Hire that out because I'm gonna take that time to go over here and make twenty grand. Right, absolutely. No, that's what it is. It's that nitpicky thing and figuring out how to get it out of you and get into the consumable mindset. Right. He was like, <clears throat> "Which windscreen you want for the?" Because I bought it. I bought the motorcycle, and it didn't have a windscreen, right? Which is like a little windshield. It's a it's yeah. an adventure bike. And I was like, which one you got? Because I got the smaller one. I go, well, that's the one I want. He's like, <laughs> hey, well, I need a win. I'll buy the big one later. It I'm buying matter. the small one now. I, I don't matter. care, bro. Like, I want the bike to run. Let's go. And it's funny. Have you ever been in a place where they're not used to someone like that in a way? Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Where they're I like, get it all the you, time. Sure? you sure? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm sure. Here's all I need you to guarantee me is when I leave here, that thing runs great. Yeah. That's it. And that's what those people with the Mercedes that we were laughing at, that's what they're guaranteed. I guarantee you, they have a lot less breakdowns. Why? Because they're constantly, they have a schedule. Those people like take it to the dealer and the dealer maintains it. And yeah, they may do like, embellished you know uh, of what they're charging them for it they don't care dude doesn't matter like the car runs it runs good it, ac cools good it's like why are you why are we overthinking this trying to be like i'm gonna, I'm gonna start it <laughs> somehow y'all ain't gonna think, get me for everything i think we're we're conflating hobby land with professional work land mm -hmm. right i got a land rover defender that i've had for about a month now you know what you call a Land Rover owner? A mechanic, right? There's something <laughs> all the time. But I love them. I've had several Land sure. Rovers and, and and the Discovery, the old Discovery Gym ones, and now I've got a Defender. And that's my hobby, okay? I enjoy kind of messing around with the Defender and, and that kind of stuff. I'm not hobbying work. 
Right. This is where I make my, my money. Right. I'm trying to I'm trying to stack bills over here. So this is not time for hobby land. Like, well, if you want to fool with RC cars on the weekend, OK, right. put that energy over there. OK, that's great. That's maybe it's therapeutic. I get it. We like taking yeah, a little bit. Fun. But fun. in your company, probably not the best place to do a lot of like you're stepping over dimes. You're stepping over dollars and picking up dimes. It's just the truth of it. I mean, I've been doing this too long to know guys will call us all the time. Like they've overthought to the nth degree. Like, Hey, I was thinking I could run neutralizer through the pump after every job and it'll save the pump. And and I don't have to buy, you know, maybe one or two pumps a year instead of four or five pumps a year. What do you think? I said, yeah, that's great. You're going to spend five times the money in neutralizer than you would have in pumps. Go home and be with your kids and throw the pump away or use it as a paperweight. Totally. Like I always, I always, and here's how I used to make, get myself out of this, right? What you were talking about overspending is that I would just go on Amazon or wherever I was before, probably before we knew each other. I buy like five pumps. Just be done with it. I'd be like, I'll spend a thousand tonight. (laughs) I'll spend a thousand on pump. They don't even really need them. You know, they're going to go bad, but you're just like, oh, I'm going to get myself out of this damn broke mentality, by God. I'll put my money where my mouth is, you know, and that's how you got to do it. You almost got to spend your way out of it You do to where you start getting a little loose with them dollars. But I will tell you, that's how Pierce is. Pierce is loose with them dollars, bro. He is not scared. He'll boom, five grand here, bam, two, boom, boom. I'm like, dang, P, you got a lot going out. He goes, I got a lot coming in too. That's he, right. He's, he's got the flow. There's a flow happening. When you right. can strict, there's not much going out and there ain't much coming in because you two tied up changing That's the right. diaphragm. That's 100%, man. And if, if you've got your finger on the pulse of your business, see, I know that. I make tactical, quick decisions at the shop. I'm like, hey, we need that boom bike. How much is it? Don't matter. I know roughly how much it is, and I know it's not going to affect the PL because you ask him, like, I want to know that PL number all the time. Where are we at for the month? At the first of the month, and I track it all the way through the month. And then we're, this is the last week of the month. No spending, all sales, rake it in because I want to close a profit every month, every quarter, every year. That's how we make money, right? But if it's something piddly in the shop, now here's where I'll think about it. If it's a mezzanine, 65000 for a mezzanine, right? If it's Air, we just put air conditioning in the shop two weeks ago. That's about 35 grand. But I know that the guys need air. It's hot as crap in there. You've been in there in the summer mm-hmm. and the productivity goes down and, and it's, it's just hot. Well, it ain't going to now because it's 70 degrees in the shop. And everybody's happy. Productivity goes up. So those decisions, we're going to make a little more calculated decision there. We got a, a pretty decent work truck. It's a 2012 F-250. It's got some quirks. But I don't, you know, I'll run that truck two years and I will park it and leave it and go buy another one. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on a a truck I gave $13,000 for. You know, is that a lot of money? It's kind of right there at the line, but I'm going to get my money's worth out of it. And I just probably just leave it somewhere or or let somebody work on it. If they fix it, they do. I've moved on with life at that point. Right, right. So all in all, guys, like I know that it's a, we, we made this video because we know that it's an ongoing thing with guys in our world, just blue collar guys in general. And, and we come from that. Amen. So that's why we address it. And, and hopefully this video can be a little bit of ministry, a little medicine for you to kind of rethink the way that you're approaching um, your equipment and your business. Uh, you got to have money going out to have money coming in. You have to. You can't sit there and tweak on stuff all day, all night. Even you guys who like to t- tinker on your motorcycles and stuff like that, tinker on the motorcycle, dude. Don't tinker on this. And look, what I mean by that is don't fix things that could be replaced easier, okay? I, I'm not talking about, you know, just throwing away a damn GX690 every year. <laughs> you know, it's oh, no. probably could go a couple more years, you know. But be tactical talk, with it. Be tactical, be tactical, be smart. But um, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully you enjoy the content. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you want to come to the Serious Starter Boot Camp, Cody and I, we lay it down two days. It's 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 intense, dude. All right, so you know that. Cody, talk a little bit about it, what you're going to be saying. at the Yeah, event. I guess – We've done this probably six or seven times now, sold it out every time. It's a great event. It's I like it because I'm at home and I can be a little more 
you know, laid back. But uh, the first day will be in-depth soft washing knowledge, chemical knowledge, techniques, uh, property protection, mitigation stuff, uh, some safety stuff in there just because it's going to help you long term. And then we're going to go out and clean a roof, a house, and a driveway. I try to line up the Holy Trinity there, and we're going to go in the field after lunch uh, and, and do some cleaning. So you get to see the whole process and what it looks like to do, you know, a $1,500 job and be done in a few hours. So that's cool. Uh, Saturday, the next day, Aaron goes in there, and uh, I, I've heard Aaron spill several times now, several times at WashCon and, and just several times. And I still learn stuff. I still leave like, I don't really, I don't really feel like I know a lot anymore. So <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. I try to, I try to give you guys your money's worth, especially on the, uh, on my day. I try to definitely pack it full and um, blow your brain cells up a little bit with Google and marketing and SEO and, and stuff that you're going to need to know as a serious starter in the pressure washing game. Okay. So that'll be the first link in the description. That's coming up May 20th and 21st at Southeast Softwash HQ in Roanoke, Alabama. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, Josh. So all the way from Australia, moving. That's right. You flew in? I flew in. Bro, flew in for the Serious Starter event. I loved it. It was just full of information, you know, worth every penny. Great. It's like a college course all wrapped up in like one day. Learned a lot about marketing and how to get Google My Business set up, and I think it's going to be great for me starting my new business. Learned all the chemicals, how to. Uh, everything you need to know soft wash wise. Now I feel like I'm I feel like I'm a year ahead of the game now. Dude, honestly. Awesome. In all honesty, you know, the system works, it makes sense, uh, and it's everything the recipe for everything to succeed, I think.